Hey there. Thanks for checking out LaunchFire's webinar on digital strategies for restaurant marketers. So this webinar is all about ways that restaurants can use digital to help them um, grow their businesses. Um, and we're going to dig into specific strategies and tactics. So let's get started. So to kick things off, um, I've got a few statistics on the board that I thought were Im important things to highlight. Um, the first one is that uh, only 40% of restaurants have um, their menus displayed online. Now, I realize that most national chains are going to have their menus online, but for those who don't, it's uh, highly recommended to do so because I think that's a, a crucial way that consumers are checking out restaurants prior to uh, making their selections. The next thing is that 62% um, of consumers um, say they'll go elsewhere if a restaurant's menu isn't mobile accessible. And I think that speaks to um, how consumers are using their mobile devices um, during that sort of research and investigation stage when they're choosing a place. Speaking of that sort of investigation stage and those things, things that influence people, 85% um, of consumers say they trust diner reviews over professional reviews. And I think this makes a lot of sense because um, you know, a professional review is just one person's opinion after all, and who knows whether our tastes are the same as theirs. Um, and dining, diner reviews, are there's a, the sample size is a lot bigger, um, so you can read both good and bad reviews and get a real sense of, of how that restaurant's performing and how people really think about it. And then the last thing is 61% of consumers read reviews prior to choosing a restaurant. So I think... These statistics all speak to the fact that people are using digital, they're using their mobile devices, and so we as restaurants have to have a bun bunch of outbound stuff in, in the ether, so to speak, um, so that when people are researching, they come across our restaurants and they can get some information, be it menus and reviews. So where the first set of statistics kind of highlighted how people are using um, digital and mobile in, in the selection process and finding a restaurant, I think this set of stats... Um, really talks about how they're using digital um, within the dining experience. So 49% of consumers consider their phone to be an extremely important part of eating out. That's not to say that they're using their phone to check out your menus or any of your content. To a large extent, they're texting, they're checking emails, they're surfing the web. I think what it really talks, what it really sort of um, accentuates or highlights is that People are pulling their phones out when they're in restaurants. It's part of the experience, and it's something that people sort of do as almost a knee-jerk reaction. So there's screen time there that we can leverage if we have great, great content. The next stat says that 24% of people take pictures of their food uh, while they're dining, which I think that kind of speaks to how, um, A, people like to... Um, take pictures and, and send them out on their social networks to let people know what they're doing. But I think it also sort of speaks to how um, restaurant, um, the restaurant world is kind of blended into pop culture and celebrity culture through um, reality television shows and um, cooking shows and so forth. So I think um, people like to associate themselves with, with restaurants and eating out and um, the sort of the, the finer things in life. So I think there's an opportunity for us as restaurant marketers to take that propensity for people to use their phones in store and leverage it to our marketing benefit. So I think those last two slides kind of highlighted how people are using their digital devices to find restaurants and also during, during their dining experience. And so I think the areas where we as restaurant marketers can leverage those consumer habits to our marketing benefit are A, uh, in driving awareness and education, and then getting butts and seats, actually engaging diners while they're in our restaurants, and then converting guests into members. So those are the kind of the areas that I'm going to kind of cover today and talk about some of the strategies and tactics um, that we've seen have been working for our restaurant clients. So the first piece is driving awareness and education. You know, I guess in my mind, the first step in a consumer's path to your restaurant is when they become aware of and educated about your offering. It's kind of only when, once those two things have happened that I think you have a reasonable shot at their business. So, you know, how can we use digital to, to drive awareness and, and education? And I think it kind of boils into down to three crucial areas, and those are social, local, and reviews. So let's talk a little bit more in depth about those. So the first one is social. You know, I think initially marketers saw social as an engagement tool, uh, 
Um, um, as the analogy I like to draw is it was seen as a stadium that we needed to fill with eager consumers who were ready to check out our brand messaging and engage with us. So 2010, 2011 was all about getting more Facebook likes and Twitter follows. But I think we've smartened up over the last couple of years and we've seen social networks um, for what they really are, which is a megaphone more so than they are a stadium. And the tricky part is that we as marketers aren't the only people speaking into that megaphone. In fact, we're sharing it with consumers. And in the case of restaurant marketers, we're sharing it with our guests. So I think the challenge for us is to find innovative ways to prompt consumers to talk about us through that social megaphone. Here's an example of a promotion we created for Cracker Barrel. And the objective of the promotion was to do exactly what I said, get consumers to... Um, uh, use that social megaphone to, to broadcast um, and propagate pr Cracker Barrel's messaging. So this promotion was a, a digital sweepstakes where each day you could come and answer a question about Cracker Barrel's food. Um, and it was a pictorial question, so you would answer by clicking on the on the picture that, you wa that was the right answer. Um, you got one entry into a grand prize draw for each day you came and answered a question. But you could increase your entries um, by pinning it or posting it on Facebook. So this is a great example of offering an incentive for people to use that social megaphone to help promote a restaurant brand. Um, and by the way, this promotion drove uh, over 16 million branded print impressions and several million Facebook posts. So it was pretty darn successful. Here's another example, um, uh, another different way of doing it. Same, same client, Cracker Barrel. Um, and in this case, it was a, a summer promotion. Cracker Barrel's a big summer restaurant because it's uh, popular with road trips because it's often located on roadsides. And so we created this gamified promotion which uh, featured uh, a virtual board game, very much like Monopoly, that had sets of properties that you had to land on. And when you landed on a property, you, you earned its associated icon. If you completed sets of properties, um, you got an entry into that set's associated draw. So each set had a draw associated to it. So, you know, the green set might be a trip to Florida and the uh, orange set might be a trip to Nashville and so on and so forth. Um, but the cool thing was you would, through playing the game, you would necessarily land on some properties for a second time. And when you did, you were prompted to share the icon because, of course, you already had collected the icon. So you could share the icon using your social networks. Well, people shared these icons on Facebook uh, uh, almost 1.7 million times during the promotion. Uh, it was the uh, the it drove 95 percent of all of Cracker Barrel's Facebook interaction. Um, during the promotional period and drove an enormous amount of traffic to their website. So this was a very, very successful program at outreach, at, at getting people to, again, use that seg social megaphone to promote Cracker Barrel's brand. So I think there are lots of great ways that we can use digital to increase the volume, sort of turn up the, uh, amplify our social reach, if you will. The next thing I wanted to talk about was local. So... Whether you're a national chain or a sole proprietorship, your restaurants are really local businesses, and so your marketing plans need to have a healthy dose of local strategy because, after all, you're trying to reach out to people that are sort of in your proximity. I think SEO is a, is a huge one here for restaurant marketers. So 72% of all searches are searches for local content. So as an example, if you're Dave's New York City Diner, I know that's an atrocious, atrociously bad example, but if you're Dave's New York City Diner or, say, the International House of Pancakes, you want to show up on page once when somebody Googles New York breakfast joints. Out of interest, I actually did Google New York breakfast joints, and it provided me with, uh, at the very least, an outstanding segue into my next point, which is local bloggers. Um, as you can see from the search results, blog blogger James Mulcahy has listed New York's top eight restaurants for breakfast. That's a pretty powerful piece of media. Um, so if I'm in New York City and I, I'm, or I'm from out of town, or even if I live there and I'm kind of tired of my regular haunts, um, and I Google that phrase um, and I get J James' blog post, well, I'm definitely going to check out one of those eight restaurants. I mean, they're they're purported to be the top eight restaurants in New York for breakfast. So um, I think that there's a great opportunity for restaurants to engage with local food bloggers and try to get them to blog about your businesses. And, you know, some tactics for getting them to blog about your business, offer them a free meal for doing so. Or 
have a contest for dedi- uh, sort of targeting local bloggers where anyone who blogs about your restaurant during the promotional period is entered into a draw to win um, you know, food for a year or whatever. Um, that may seem, seem expensive, but the amount of free media you're going to get um, for offering someone, uh, you know, a couple thousand dollars worth of, worth of food um, w- is far, far outweighs your cost of, de- of delivering that. So I think there are lots of great tactics to engage local bloggers, and local bloggers give some, give, put out reviews that people feel are authentic and have a real influence on the places that people pick. So the next big opportunity for outreach and helping people select uh, a restaurant and being part of their consideration set is reviews. Um, I've seen this firsthand. My wife and I have two kids, small ones, so that means we never get to go out anymore. Um, So when we do get to go out, we really want to pick a place we're going to enjoy. So when we have a night out, my wife will often go and check out reviews. When we're at home, she'll do that on her iPad. Um, if we meet out for drinks, she'll do that um, on her mobile phone. The other the other night, actually, we um, we were out for one of those rare occasions with another couple. We had arranged to meet downtown, um, and we were in the bar, and there we were checking out reviews on our and, and menus actually on our on our mobile phones uh, as we tried to pick a place nearby to go for dinner. And it occurred to me that that's a that's a, a pretty powerful uh, tool for restaurant marketers. The other thing I'd say about reviews is they're a great mechanism for getting candid feedback about your strengths and weaknesses. A lot of people don't want to confront their server or manager um, with their complaints about a restaurant, but they'll certainly do it in a digital form. So uh, I think monitoring them can really help you um, hone your business and your service and your menu items uh, to make sure that um, you're, you're always getting better and that you address your weaknesses. So now let's talk about driving um, consumers into our restaurants or getting butts in seats. You know, I I think there are a number of ways that digital can help us. And the ones I want to hone in on today, well, we'll start with email and SMS. So obviously, building our email and SMS lists are great tactics for restaurant marketers. For smaller local businesses, they offer a great way to stay in touch with people, to build that sort of more intimate one-to-one relationship with people, let them know about your events and promote your new menu items. For larger um, restaurant chains with more sophisticated marketing departments, I think we can use these tools to be you know, considerably more surgical in our outreach. Um, so consider this, if I'm at work, um, and I'm in the advertising business, so I'm at my computer a fair amount of the time, if I'm at work and between 11 and 12 I get an email about uh, your lunch menu, you can rest assured that you're going to be part of my consideration set as I figure out what I'm going to do for lunch that day. Um, similarly, if I'm a person who's on the go and I get uh, an SMS message highlighting your menu items, again, if I get it at the right time in the day, um, you get a great chance of being part of my consideration set. And if you really want to up the ante, um, consider extending an offer, be it, uh, be it um, uh, a free dessert or a discount on your lunch. Whatever it is, um, if you extend an offer, you can not only become part of people's consideration set, but you can push them over the edge by giving them a deal. So I think there are great opportunities with email and SMS. So if we if we take that as a given, the next question is, how do we go about building our, our email lists? And so I think, first of all, we should implement systems in our restaurants, like right within them, that allow guests to opt into our lists before leaving. Um, and better yet, offer them an incentive for doing so. Maybe uh, offer them a free dessert or a chance to win something right there while they're in store. But the bottom line is, Our restaurants have thousands of people go through them every day. Each one is an opportunity to establish an ongoing relationship. And I think when we don't do that, we're missing those opportunities every single day. So I think in-store is crucial. And building email and SMS lists is something we're often tasked with um, by our clients. So I pulled up an example here of a promotion we ran for KFC when they were promoting their famous uh, Double Down Sandwich. Um, We were part of the uh, set of agencies that helped promote that. Um, And the program we came up with was really simple, um, sort of gamification 101 sweeps, where um, basically uh, you were awarded with one entry for signing up for the contest, but you could double your entries when you watch KFC's 30-second spot. 
You could double them again when you downloaded their uh, coupon. Uh, they could be redeemed for a discount on the sandwich. And then uh, you double them again for signing up for their email and for sharing. So it was kind of a linear path um, that, was, uh, that we were kind of guided through um, and encouraged people to take each step that was indexed to KFC's business objectives. Um, by the way, almost 90% of people did all of the or took all of the steps. So it was a really successful program for KFC. And it's that kind of um, very simple thing, offering incentives for people. And in this case, you know, we did it. We did the whole thing. We educated them. Uh, we gave them a discount to prompt them to come into store. And then we got them to join uh, our communities. And then we got them to share it out. And it's all just using simple incentives. So there's an example of, of how you can help build those lists using digital. I think another big opportunity for restaurant marketers is loyalty. I don't think we're going to be able to create consumers who are as loyal as the two nice little dogs on my screen, um, but we can certainly prompt them to come into our restaurants more frequently. And I think um, frequency uh, and increasing spend is only part of the story with loyalty. I think we can use loyalty to build consumer profiles, which can be really valuable at retargeting. Um, you know, the, digital is digital technologies are so have, are so flexible that they can communicate directly with your loyalty API and you can not only measure you know how, how much people spend but specifically what they bought when they come in what their purchasing patterns are like what foods they like uh, what things they typically order and what they don't order so we can extend offers to them in the future that can either increase the frequency that they with which they come in or um, get them to buy more uh, or order more things when they're in our restaurants so I think profiles is a great opportunity and the other thing I would say about loyalty is I don't think that we should only reward for purchase. Um, I think that there are a lot of different things that we might want to reward for that'll help us as marketers. Um, consider uh, rewarding for e email and SMS opt-ins or for submitting reviews or for sharing on social networks. These are all things that help us as marketers. So why not offer consumers a reward for doing those as well? That reward doesn't necessarily have to be um, as great as it is for actually spending money, but giving them something, some type of incentive to do those things for us, they're going to help us with our marketing in the future. So it kind of makes sense for us to, to, uh, to do that. And I think um, we've been able to do that with our clients by taking our promotion databases and um, having them communicate directly with our clients' loyalty databases through API. And this has been really successful at getting consumers um, to to uh, do all of the things that are indexed to our clients' objectives, joining their list, sharing on social, submitting reviews, and shopping. So I think there's a lot of opportunities with loyalty, um, and digital has really opened up um, a host of new opportunities for us to leverage. So we've talked about how we can use digital to drive awareness and education, um, and how we can use it to prompt people to come in and, and, and dine with us more frequently. But I think another great opportunity is driving in-store engagement. And I don't mean uh, proposals and guys on their knees. Um, what I'm talking about is um, getting people engaged with our brand while they're actually in-store. So naturally, the dining experience has a few pockets of downtime. I'm talking about like when you first come in, and you're waiting to get served, or maybe once you've already placed your order and you're waiting for your food, or when you're waiting for your check, or, or even uh, between, me, between courses. Um, these are all natural pockets of downtime when we might be able to drive some engagement. So, um, you know, how could we do that? What, what might be the tactics? Well, I guess before we look at tactics, we have to first look at what our goals are. So I think the goals that we should be focusing on for in-store engagement, first of all, upsales, getting people to order more things off our menu. Um, second, prompting social sharing. And third, converting guests into members. So I think for driving up sales, um, I think what we want to do is build um, digital, engaging digital content um, that features our menu items um, and offerings that, that um, we want people to buy. And here's an example of one for a, a, a steakhouse. Um, and basically what it is is it's a quiz um, that people take. It's like a personality test. And so you answer a few questions and it spits out a personality and um, some suggestions for you in terms of um, or, or the typical order that you would have. So let's say I, I, uh, I fill out the questionnaire and they say I'm the 
I'm the uh, caveman, and so I should have the 72-ounce steak. Well, it won't only suggest the big steak. It'll suggest uh, an appetizer. It'll suggest the entree. It'll suggest some sides. It'll suggest some desserts and maybe some wine pairings. So all of these things are things that can help you drive up sales during the experience. And because there's kind of a funny element to it of giving the person a personality and a sort of an output that says what kind of person they are, it makes it fun for people to pass the phone around or get other people on their own devices to take, to take the quiz as well. And the whole time, they're interacting with your menu items and you're suggesting things to them. So it's this type of digital content that can take advantage of that screen time that people have to help you drive up sales. So the next thing we want people to do is leverage their social networks to share. And you know, already people are doing this. 18% of smartphone users tweet about their meal. 19% post their meals on Facebook and 24% take pictures of food and upload it to Instagram and other image sites. So people are already doing that. So my recommendation there would be to offer them incentive, an incentive, maybe a chance to win their meal or you, just to win a free dessert or a free glass of wine um, for doing these things. So give them some incentive so that you can drive those numbers up from 18, 19, and 24% and drive them up higher because the more people share out that stuff on their social networks, the more noise you're making for your restaurant. You're kind of amplifying that social reach, which will help you drive people and uh, new customers into your restaurants. And the last piece is converting guests into members um, so that they don't leave, the, leave your restaurants um, without us taking advantage of that opportunity. And this is where contests really uh, can be the most effective things and really are the most effective way of doing this. So um, consider running something, some, having something on your menu or your table tents that's got a QR code or a mobile URL um, that gives people an incentive to opt into your SMS list, your, your email list, and even join your loyalty programs. Um, if you give them a chance to win their meal or a chance to win a grand prize, a trip, whatever, um, you're going to drive significant numbers of people in converting those guests into uh, members of your communities, members of your, of your loyalty programs and so forth, so that you can market to them in the future and bring them back more frequently. I think that is a massive opportunity for restaurant marketers and something that we should be taking advantage of um, because every day is a, is a lost opportunity. Every person that walks out of our restaurant without joining is a lost opportunity, and I think we can take advantage of those. And obviously there's, uh, you know, some restaurants don't have loyalty programs. So I pulled up this example of a promotion that we ran for California Pizza Kitchen. Um, and the, it was about sort of converting people, getting people to come back into, uh, into, sh into dine more frequently, but also converting people to join uh, in from, from guests into members. Um, and this program, basically, everybody who dined at a California Pizza Kitchen location during the promotional period was given a scratch card. And they weren't allowed to open that scratch card or scratch it right there and then. They actually had to come back in and have a cpk -er, um scratch that card on their next visit. So that prompted people to come back in and visit um, for a second time. And so when you came back in and had that card scratched, obviously most cards weren't winners. But what they did have um, was a digital code. So if you didn't win your, a free meal or a discount coupon or something, you got this digital code which you could then enter on your mobile phone or on your computer on, on a microsite um, for a chance to win 100000 bucks. And then there were also triggers to get people to opt in and get um, people to share the program out. So this is an example of how we took... Um, in-store guests and converted them into digital members and also brought them back for secondary visits. And we were processing uh, a little, almost um, three, 4,000 codes a day um, for CPK during the promotional period. So a very successful promotion and a really simple tactic that can drive a number of the business results you're looking for.